Hey, everybody. It's the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy here with American's comedian, Kurt Metzger. And uh, we've been talking about this a lot, that House Republicans have launched a new committee to investigate the investigators, to investigate U.S. intelligence agencies. And among those who were supportive of this idea initially was a Democrat named Ilhan Omar as a member of the squad. And this is what she said when this yeah, was being proposed. obviously cuts to the Pentagon. This is what she said when this idea was proposed. The obviously cuts to the Pentagon budget um, is pretty exciting for folks like me who have putting up amendments to do so. I also think um, the uh, church style um, uh, committee uh, that they are thinking about to look into if there has been any violations um, of First Amendment rights of Amer of Americans uh, by the FBI and others um, also interests me. So we'll see uh, what ends up happening yeah. and if Republicans are able to actually be able to get anything done. So that's Ilhan Omar. She's excited about the idea that there's going to be a committee to investigate the FBI. To her, it's a good idea. And, you know, she's a bit skeptical as to whether or not Republicans will do a good job, but she's excited at the idea of it. But guess what happened a few days later when it came up for a vote, when the committee came up for a vote? Well, this happened. Here's Max Blumenthal. Every single House Democrat voted against the establishment of a Frank Church-style committee to investigate civil liberties violations and covert activities by the FBI and CIA, including the Bureau's potential use of informants and assets to instigate and inflame political violence. And he points out that Ilhan Omar praised the establishment of a church-style committee to investigate the FBI and other intelligence agencies, but then she followed party leadership's orders and voted against it. And here's Ilhan Omar's vote against establishing the church-style committee, and AOC voted the same, uh, voting no. Uh, you can see it right there. Uh, Ilhan Omar is a nay after praising it. So. What Did happened? This, call or something? Well, that, that's the question. It's, it reminds me of this. So back early on in the Ukraine proxy war, back in March 2022, so a few weeks after Russia invaded, Ilhan Omar said this, the consequences of flooding Ukraine with billions of dollars in U.S. weapons, likely not limited to just military-specific equipment, but also including small arms and ammo, are unpredictable and likely disastrous, specifically when they are given to paramilitary groups without accountability. So, yeah, that's a strong statement voicing serious concerns about this proxy war and spending billions of dollars on weapons for Ukraine, which she says will be likely disastrous. Well, guess what happened when it became time to vote on this proposal that she called likely disastrous? Well, here it is. Squad members and progressive Democrats all vote for $40 billion war package for Ukraine, despite condemning military spending in the past. And. When Ilhan Omar did this, after previously criticizing that very measure, that very proposal, she was confronted by some anti-war protesters. Um, here's a screenshot of that. So Ilhan Omar was giving a speech and some protesters got up and said, hey, why are you doing this? Well, this was Ilhan Omar's response. She said, I'm sorry, you all aren't anti-war protesters. You are dangerous propagandists who are literally making a mockery of the anti-war movement. I have never had the pleasure of responding to Russian ridiculous internet disinformation in person before. Thank you for the opportunity. I am amazed at the nerve that some people have to not be upset with the country literally waging war, but at the country defending itself and those helping them do that. I was even told by one of the people, the protesters, it's America that started the Russia war. Seriously, what the F? So, Those helping them do that is the part that everybody is upset about because it was hundreds of millions exactly, of dollars. Exactly, which she was too initially. So what happened? Yeah. What happened there? What happened to Ilhan Omar? She found out that America didn't start it, maybe. And so I asked this question. What happened to the Ilhan Omar who warned in March that flooding Ukraine with weapons is likely disastrous, but who now votes to flood Ukraine with weapons and trashes anti-war protesters as Russian puppets. And the same question now, what happened to the Ilhan Omar, who just a few days ago warned or said that this new committee to investigate U.S. intelligence agency was a great idea and then turned around a few days later and voted against it, siding, by the way, with people who have viciously attacked her. 
sometimes Ilhan Omar has stood up to neocons and she's been smeared, especially for her criticism over Israel. She's been attacked because she's a woman of color who wears hijab. She's faced all kinds of horrible smears from neocons who don't like her criticism of Israel. But here she is now siding with them, essentially, in refusing to provide any scrutiny of these very same forces in the national security state. Doesn't she have some kind of thing? I remember she got booed in Minnesota by all the Somalis that were at it. I don't know. Some yeah, concert. and the Gray Zone covered this. And uh, Max Blumenthal was on this show to talk about that. That was over her uh, her policies when it comes to Africa. And there were people there who felt as if she was on the wrong side, that she was supporting corrupt people. It's like her her people, ba- I don't know how it works in Somali. Is it like a tribal thing or is it like a family? Yeah, thing? I don't remember the details, but it was something but, about her supporting corrupt people. Yeah, there's. I mean, so there's some kind of connect. I, I always think these people, it's not like, I don't mean like blackmail, like we have a secret tape of you saying something, but as in something you want in general, maybe it's politically, maybe it's something on the side that has nothing to do with politics. We'll hook that up, but you got to keep your trap shut, you know? Exactly. I think it's like that. Yep. And there she is, another example of her abandoning her stance, a very principled stance. And this time, instead of taking a few months like it did with the Ukraine proxy war, took her a few days. It's called Real Politic with a K <laughs> at the end. Everybody, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles in January and February in Los Angeles. And, and then we're going to Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets to become a premium member while you're there.